Hey robot makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So, do you want to learn how to make your own googly eyes that google what they see? Then this is the show for you. Let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code, and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to our slides and see what today's craziness is all about. So yes, this is all about how to make some googly eyes that can google what they see. <laughs> Is that kind of self-explanatory? I hope so. So we're going to be using OpenAI's image capture and uh, captioning service today. Uh, I'm going to do this with uh, the help of some googly eyes as well, with a little camera module in there, something I've designed and printed out for this show. We're going to have a look at the crazy idea, the 3D design stuff, and we're going to also have a look at how to poke the OpenAI API uh, so that it can do some funny stuff with the images that it can see. And if you're watching this live, we'll also have a bit of a Q&A uh, and a mailbox as well. Okay, so this is one of those eyes that just, the ideas that just pops into your head and you think, yeah, I have to make that. So I was thinking of some googly eyes and they would have like a camera in the middle, like a third eye, and they would be able to sort of take pictures of what they can see, and then it would send that image off to OpenAI, and OpenAI can do some really cool things, as well as being ChatGPT. It can also do all kinds of image generation, but also image uh, recognition far, far better than any kind of object detection. It can tell you exactly what's going on in the scene, uh, and it can even tell you that in a kind of tone of voice. So it's really, really cool. So that's kind of where I was coming from with this. I wanted to sort of show something a bit more interesting with OpenAI other than just this is how you can use it with Python. Um, so I created this little 3D model you can see here. It's got two motors in it with encoders and this will use the one in my box here, the Pimeroni Inventor Hat Mini. So this is the, the Pimeroni Inventor Hat Mini and it's a little hat that will sit on top of a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W like this one here. And that means we can control some motors very, very accurately. They also sell the motors and the little cables that connect everything together as well. So I was thinking about how to make the eyes move around. I did see a video about a great big eye on a, on a sort of robotic arm that would follow somebody around the room. It was at, at the size of this room I'm in mean, now is absolutely gigantic. So I was thinking about some kind of parallel structure uh, where the eye would sit on one part. And then I was just Googling to see what the people had made and then I saw this one where they simply just had these black discs that rotated round and it looks like the eyes are looking left and looking right and I was like well that's much simpler than my idea of like a parallel structure and all that so this is kind of what I've gone with and I had all the parts available to do this too. So then the capture part is going to be some image processing sim similar to what we did with the um, uh, Bubo where it can take a picture and it can tweet it out that same kind of library using the Pi camera and uh, Pillow to do image processing We can do all that to prepare the image and then we can basically just send that image to open AI And then we can control the eyes if we want to as well They can just like look around and do crazy stuff like that and then optionally if I've got time to do this I will also uh, add in some speech synthesis so it will speak back what it can see so it really does say what it sees uh, and that's just using some speech synthesis, a bit like the the Python AI project I did a couple of months back, uh, which I think is one of the popular videos on my channel. We could also make these into a pair of glasses, which would be pretty cool as well. So we're going to be using the OpenAI captioning service, uh, so it can take an image and it can describe quite colourfully, if you like, uh, what is inside that image. Uh, we can capture the image using, like I said, the Raspberry Pi's camera software, Pi camera, using Python, and we can then just pass that to OpenAI, send it off, and we get back a text string describing what is in there. We can even say, like I said, how to describe the scene, the tone of voice, the personality, whether it's sarcastic, whether it's mean, whether it's poetic, all that kind of stuff. We can do all that just like you would uh, with uh, chat GPT where you can say in the voice of you know William Shakespeare or something like that how we would know that I don't know but it does so we've got a couple of 3d printed parts there isn't too many actually this looks a little bit like one of those view masters you remember those with a little wheel on top kind of looks a little bit like that uh, so there's two motor holes uh, the motors kind of poke through you know, they insert them from the back and um, this will just hold them in place. And there's a little holder there at the top for the camera module to go on with a couple of screw holes as well. So it holds the motors and the Raspberry Pi camera and also the eye pieces, which we will print out as well. So the motors, as you can see here, um, these are the N20 or 
also known as the Micro Metal Motors with Encoders. And that's what they call them, MMME from Pimeroni. You can get them on their store. They sometimes go out of stock, so just have to watch for those ones because they're very, very popular. They've already got the header on the back for the cable and they have the encoder sensor on the back of the um, spindle as well. Not what you call the, the thing, that the shaft that rotates round. The camera, so I've actually used a Raspberry Pi 2 camera on this one, not a Raspberry Pi 3. Either would work, to be fair. I probably just need to make that hole at the top a little bit larger for the Pi Camera 3, because I tried putting that one in and it was just a little bit too tight for it to be able to autofocus properly, so I'll probably just need to adjust that uh, a little bit. But very, very simply screws in there with a couple of uh, screws and bolts, M2 I think they were, uh, and that's pretty secured in place. We're going to have a look at it in a minute on the overhead camera. And it's angled to make it um, the image capture more natural on your desk. So it's got a slight uh, lean to it. So the eyes are kind of pointing towards you from the desk. And then the eyepieces, these are very simple, just sort of discs, 50 millimeters in diameter. They've got a hole in the middle. And this is where the, the motors can stick through. And then the pupil piece can attach to those motor spindles. They have like a D shape. A spindle that pokes through there. Uh, I didn't actually have anything specific to attach these to the the eye holder, so I simply used some super glue. But you could use hot glue or whatever you like. Really, you could probably design it a bit better. Uh, I also used my cre cut to cut out some black uh, and white circles that we could just stick to it. So just some vinyl uh, for that. I think I used something something similar to one of these smart vinyl pieces, but not the not the shiny silver one there. And then the pupils, um, they also like their small discs, but they have a little socket on the back, which is shaped specifically for the motor to push through to. Um, so it allows the, uh, they can rotate freely on the motor um, with the eye behind them. So they're sort of black and it gives the illusion that the eyes are sort of looking left, looking right, whereas actually they're sort of rotating round. Uh, it's quite cool. So let's write some code, shall we? Let's have a set up our environment for OpenAI with Python. So there's a couple of steps to this, but it's not too difficult. If I can do it, anyone can do it. So to use OpenAI, you'll need to create yourself an account on the um, platform.openai.com. If I go over to, uh, let's see over here, you can see over here we've got the uh, openai.com, but if you actually go to platform, oops, platform why can't I type um, there we go it will take you into uh, if you haven't got an account you can sign up for an account there um, I think there is a free version of this uh, but to do a lot of the AI the API stuff you do need to have a, a billable account though the pricing is like ridiculous I've not actually hit any anything that would, uh, that would attract a cost yet on there um, so you can see there we've got this little personal menu and we'll be looking at that shortly. Okay. So once you've created your account, you've logged into platform.openai.com. Um, you can then click on the personal menu and then click on the view API keys. So we're going to click on that to view API keys and can understand what this is all about. So API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a way that one computer can talk to another computer, usually with something like uh, JavaScript object notation or squiggly brackets, uh, JSON as it's often called, uh, and we can send data back and forward. Uh, you can, uh, typically you ask for it for something, you send some data and then it'll send you a message back. So that's kind of what we do. And the way that we authenticate our code to open AI, because we don't pass it a username and password, that's quite old fashioned way of doing things. We now create a token. Um, so the token or the secret key is something that we'll create. And you can create as many of these as you like. There isn't a limit, I understand, as to how many API keys you can create. Um, but there's a there's a specific way that you have to do this. When you create the the uh, key, it will generate this sort of string of it looks like random characters. You copy that to your clipboard, paste it into your code, and then when you've clicked done, you'll not be able to copy that exact key again. So it's a way of uh, securing things from being changed. And if you if you forget that key, you can simply come in here, generate a new key, put that into your code, and away you go. So never share that key publicly. I will on this stream very, very briefly uh, just to show you how it works, but then I'll delete that key so that it can't be used. Um, and the key uniquely identifies your code to OpenAI and kind of links it to your account, your, your billing account in effect. So there we go. So we will create the key. We'll give it a name. So this one I've called it Googly Eyes. 
you click on the create a secret key which is nice and simple and then we copy that key to the clipboard and then immediately paste it into a file so the way that we do this in python is we'll create an environment file and it's usually called env so it actually starts with a dot env and that's the name of the file uh, usually in unix as well or unix linux mac os kind of operating systems if you have a dot um, as the first character of the file name it usually hides that from the file system so you don't normally see it when you open up a window but it is there and if you use something like visual studio you'll be able to see that file and uh, interact with it be able to copy and create code within it so we're going to paste that key into a file this env file and then Python will be able to pick that up when we run our code. Uh, and it means that we don't have to save that file up to GitHub. We can protect against that. And I'll show you how to do that too. So we're going to paste that key in. Visual Studio and Python let you separate these keys from the main code using these .env files, like I said. And we're going to call this inside. We're going to give it a variable name. OpenAI underscore API underscore key equals and then that string of characters. And the .env files are these environment files. And we use a library in Python that's called .environment or .env, the library, to, to load in those environment variables. Environment variables are when you create a session, uh, like a terminal session or any kind of user session in your operating system, um, it has a number of different environment variables that tell the code or the program that's running, what the computer is, what architecture it's on and so on. And you can create as many of the environment variables as you like. And it's very common to be able to do this with secret keys. So you can load them. Sometimes if it's a virtual machine, you can load them outside the virtual machine in. So the virtual machine never gets to see that code itself. Um, it's just passed to it. So it's a way of securely providing what used to be username and passwords to your code. So we're gonna be doing that. And it means that we don't hard code that key into our main program we can change that key often as we like and it will uh, still work as long as the two are in sync okay so if you like what i do uh, please give this video a like drop me a comment let me know if you've used a uh, chat gpt open ai or any of the other interfaces there or an alternative um, ai generation or image capture service uh, and also hit the uh, the subscribe button. It really makes um, a difference to me. It helps me grow my channel if you do that. So I really, really appreciate it. Every single subscriber I get. And I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock UK local time. So if you want to catch me live, you can uh, find me there. Okay, so we prepared that environment. We need to do some other things as well. So we need to create a virtual environment and we need to load into that virtual environment all these different Python packages. And we usually use pip for that so there's pip openai python dash dot env which is the uh, environment variable loader langchain which is a language chaining um, piece of software transformers which isn't a cool toy from the h's that's a like a, another uh, language model transformer pillow which does image transformations torch which is um, some ai stuff as well as flax now i had some problems with this when i was trying to get this to work on my raspberry pi um, so i was i got so much of the code to work but when i tried to do this open ai stuff i could only get this to work on my mac or other linux computers but not the arm processor and it might be just some glitch of the current build that i have on there so this is something i'll come back to and i'll update the code um, but as the recording of this there's a bit of an issue getting torch to work on there and i'm not sure why that is so just putting that out there so and then there's another thing that we needed to do which is this transformers uh, package picks the wrong platform the wrong architecture so we actually have to install rust to fix this and to get rust to recognize the correct platform the correct architecture you actually have to uh, pass it um, an option you have to tell it that it's an arm dash unknown dash linux and it uses the gnu ea bin IHF whatever that means so these are the things I found to make this work if you've not checked out rust apparently it's a very very popular language it's got almost the speed of C um, and it's very very efficient a bit like Python doing things like memory management so uh, it's a very much up-and-coming and, and favorited um, programming language then we do a bunch of imports so I'll create this code in a second, but I'm just going to show you how it kind of breaks down um, the code sections. The first thing I'm going to do is import a bunch of libraries. So we're going, to, we're going to import OS, and that's so that we can open up a file and pass that image file. 
we're going to use the dot env to do the load dot environment and that'll be to load in our secret we're going to use the lang chain so there's the lang chain dot document loaders and the image caption loader that's the thing that's going to get the image send it off to OpenAI, and then come back with the uh the the text for us and the Langchain indexes is just a way of creating these indexes again it's a bit of a complication to do with how we we pass data just you know, know that that's there we've also got logging in there there's lots of different logging levels that you can have in python and if you import the logging library you can actually set what level of log log entries you want to see on the terminal otherwise you can get loads of text appearing so by bringing in the logging we can actually configure Langchain uh, to, to not as quite as many error messages out on the screen i don't know why it classes these as error messages but it but it does so that's the first block of code the next block is where we essentially set those logging things so we say logging.getlogger and then transformer.generationutils set the level of the error like level of the logging to be errors only so that set level logging.error will just say only report errors don't give me absolutely everything similar for the tokenizers set the logging level to be errors as well and then the os environment tokenizer parallelism we set that to false i'm not actually sure what that does but um it's there okay and then we have the load dot environment or env that's the thing that actually loads in um, our environment variables it looks for that dot env file and it expects to see lots of different things in there uh, so when it loads them we will get those um, api key loaded into the environment variable that's called openai underscore uh, whatever we said before okay and then we're going to caption the image so this one is really really straightforward so you can actually have more than one image passed to this uh, image caption thing and i've created a couple of different ones that we can try out uh, today so i've got a couple of different images i've got archie and trixie we've got me we have uh, archie on his own we have frankie oh, bless frankie we have uh, uh, and a kev2 which is me kind of just like presenting my studio with a red t-shirt on so image underscore urls is a list of images that we want to pass to um, the image caption um, function i'm just going to pass one at a time so i'm just going to say it equals and then the square brackets and then commas the speech marks the name of the file so the file has to be in the current working directory for that to work and then we're going to say loader equals image caption loader and then the path to the images so path underscore images equals those image urls which is that list of uh, kev2.jpg currently we then say list underscore docs equals loader dot load that will do the the um, sending off of those images to open ai and then the index equals vector store index creator dot from loaders loader that will bring back um, some of the text or it will certainly process that text so the results equals index.query this is where we get to say kind of ask a question of OpenAI about that image so we can say describe what is in the image be as descriptive as possible using poetic language you can see i've got another one there commented out underneath it which it says describe the image but be nonchalant and snarky so we can comment out each of those and have a play with different styles of uh, reporting what's in the image you can also just ask it is there a dog in this image for example or is there an apple in this image and it will tell you yes or no so we can ask it questions as well about the image which is pretty cool and that's it that's how we do it so only a couple of lines of code to get to get this to work so if you want to learn more about how to write code in python i have a whole series of uh, learn python uh, over on kevsrobots.com so if you go to kevsrobots.com slash learn a slash you'll be taken to the learning platform there and you can take one of a growing number of courses and i'm working on another one as we speak so there's a, another couple of courses ready to be added to that uh, and <laughs> i wouldn't be uh, me if i didn't shout out my merch so i've got these uh, growing number of hats my tacky hats as somebody call them and we've also got some um, notebooks and mugs as well so i love my mug don't know if alex has hers no you've not got yours today have you um it must be inside so um yeah, you can help support the show by uh buying some merch so at this point i'm going to go over to our code and we're actually going to write some code ourselves and just have a play around with this okay so let me head over let's go back to me for a second let's load up visual studio so I have a, a nice empty file here ready to go and we're simply going to type in that code that we looked at um, just a second ago. So let's just do the import OS. Let us do the import, or is it from, 
from dot env import the loader let's do the from langchain import the caption loader and also the vector index creator then we're going to uh, import logging as well it's almost typing this code for me i like it uh, so next we are going to get rid of those um, um, logging things i'm going to say logger.get logger transformers uh, generation utils set the logging level to be just errors so we can change that to be informational warning or critical but we're just going to set that to, to errors for now and similar with the tokenizers we're going to set that to there and then we're going to set that tokenizers parallel parallelism equals false i'll have to look into what actually that is next up we're going to load that env file um, so what we'll do, I will break out at this point and we'll go and create the key over on OpenAI. We'll grab that key and we'll stick it into our tokenizer file. So let's go over to OpenAI. Let's click on that to view API keys. We're going to create a new key. Let's call this one uh, live key. Let's create our secret key. We're going to copy that. Click done. We're going to go over back to our code. We're going to go over to the .env file that we have here. And I'm simply just going to paste this in. Let's get rid of that just to there. I'm going to save that file. And now that key means that there's a link between OpenAI. They are expecting that key and they know that that's linked to my account. OK, so let's get back to our code there. So when we load up that uh, .env, it will go to this environment file. It will find this OpenAI key and it will know about that. Um, so that's all we need to do there. We can then replace this OpenAI key with the key that we've just brought in. So we can say OpenAI key, OpenAI underscore API underscore key equals, and then OS dot get environment, which means get the environment variable that's also called OpenAI underscore API underscore key. So the one that's in the file is the name in the environment. So, and if we actually run this and we did the, the command set, you'll see all the different environment variables that you have. So there's all kinds of different ones. And when we run that, essentially it does uh, like an export, which is how you create new keys in there. So that's what we're going to do there. And let's let's carry on with this. So next we, we need to create some um, image URLs. So I've got a bunch of images here. So I've got um, this one, which is Archie and Trixie, all snuggled up. We have this one of Archie looking, looking a bit chubby there. With his bee next swim. We've got one of Frankie, which is my old golden retriever who passed away a couple of years ago. We've got a picture of me going, da da, look at my nice and tidy robot lab. And then there's an, a second one of me. I don't know why I've got two the same one there. I think maybe one's a bit smaller than the other. So they're the images that we've got to play with, and we're going to basically just send to OpenAI. And we're going to ask questions of what these, what is in the image. So I'm just going to load up those so we've got a couple that we can play with. And if you're wondering how I'm able to type so fast like this, I've got uh, down here Copilot installed. And Copilot actually knows that there's a file, this caption, this is exactly the same file. So it's, it's recognized that I'm essentially typing the same thing out and it's guessing that the next line is going to be exactly the same as what I've got on the other file there. So the image we're going to start with then is Frankie, which is that golden retriever. We then going to load that into our caption, uh, our image caption loader. So we say path to the images is image URLs, which is this variable here. Um, and then we're going to do this list docs loader dot load. That will essentially load them in, into memory. We're going to do this uh, in index equals vector store index creator, which will create an index. And then we need that as part of our query because we're essentially going to say now the results are in the index dot query. And then this is where we can actually get descriptive in our text. So let's just close that. Uh, and then we can type in how we want OpenAI to tell us about what is in the uh, the um, image. And then we can simply just print out the results like so. So let's try this out. So this is going to use Frankie and it's going to describe what's in the image and be as descriptible as possible using poetic language. So let's give this a run and see what happens. Uh, and of course, I've not got my... Um, my virtual environment created there. So if I just go to this screen down here, um, what we would normally do is type in Python 3 dash M because it's a module VENV VENV and that would create our virtual environment. I've already got one created and I've already done pip install of all those different packages that we looked at um, on the slides a couple of minutes ago. So if you want to go back on check them out, you can just click on rewind and see that. Uh, but if I now just do the word source and then venv 
bin and activate will activate that virtual environment and hopefully now if I run this code um, it will it will work so let's try that it's still not finding that module called dot env so let me see where we are uh, and why would that be so if I typed that incorrectly let me just check dot env so uh, it's because I'm running it up here and I'm not running in the virtual environment within here so if I just pick the virtual environment which should be uh, that one there now it should work when I click on the run button because I was clicking run but it actually wasn't picking that up right there we go so what's happening now is it's sending that image off to open AI so if it's quite a big image it'll just take it a couple of seconds for it to do that uh, it then it then spits out some error messages just saying oh this is a, a deprecated behavior it means they've changed something and we're using an old way of calling it but it's still going to work and there you go so it says this image shows a majestic canine standing in a lush meadow <laughs> it's fur gleaning in the sunlight like a thousand stars it's eyes are bright and alert and its tail is held high in the air as if ready to take on the world how beautiful so we can change that up now so if we go back over here and let's just change this to be oh image uh, results equals and then let's just we're going to set this now say describe what's in the image be nonchalant and snarky so let's try this run so it's going to have to send that off again the entire image i think this is why i made the other image slightly smaller the kev2 one here we go so it's going to come back now with the answer just take a couple of seconds to do this there we go so it says just a dog standing on some grass like it's the most normal thing in the world <laughs> okay so let's try a different one and then uh, let's go back to what we've got here so we have archie and trixie so what i'll do up here i'm going to change going to comment that out and let's comment that out as well so now it just says image urls equals archie and trixie and let's change that back to the poetic version like that and then let's click run and let's see what happens this time so it, again it's sending that image off to OpenAI OpenAI is going to look through it and it's quite quick at doing that it probably only takes it about two seconds itself to generate its response which is quite impressive given uh, the quality of the stuff that comes back so there you go it says the image shows a cozy scene of companionship maybe I should get the uh, the image up at the same time so you can see this uh, there we go <laughs> so there you go it says the image shows a cozy scene of companionship with a contented cat and dog snuggled up together in a soft blanket the cat's fur is warm inviting shade of ginger cat isn't ginger i don't know where it's got that from no no it, it that goes on to say and the with, while the dog's fur is a deep comforting brown they are nestled close together, their heads touching in a peaceful embrace. They're not quite, heads are not quite touching. So that's, that is quite poetic, to be fair, because uh, it's not quite true, is it? Um, so let's now try, let's try just me. Let's run this one. Let's see what happens on this one. Again, it's just coming up with that... Uh, complaint about the deprecated behavior and then it says there's a requested for blah 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 right the image portrays a man in a vibrant red t-shirt let's get the image up so we can see what it's talking about <laughs> the hue of a freshly pickled apple <laughs> what his shirt is a brilliant splash of color against the muted backdrop of his world around him well that's fair enough the fabric is soft, inviting texture, inviting the viewer to reach out and touch it. Not quite sure about that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's try another one, which is just Archie on his own <laughs> looking at the front door, waiting for somebody to come back, probably. Uh, so let's go back over here and let's just let's try it on the um, poetic one first. Let's uncomment Archie and run this one more time. And see what happens i love this this is so cool there's so much you can do as well you can ask it questions about what's in the image um you can you can do all kinds of things the, the, your, the world is your oyster <laughs> so you can work better for raising that right so here we go the image shows a contented canine let's have a see of the image while we read this uh, so the image shows a contented canine perched atop a plush couch 
It's furry, it's warm, golden hue, it's eyes are bright and alert. Mm, I'm not sure about bright. Its tail is curled around its body. Maybe it thinks that's its tail there. He's, he's got a very, very small tail, Zarchi. And his ears are, per uh, are perked up in anticipation. Its paws are tucked beneath it. It's just out of sight, really, I guess. Uh, and its muzzle is slightly upturned in a peaceful smile. <laughs> yeah, it has got a bit of a smile to it, I guess. He does have a kind of a nice, a nice way about him. Um, so, so that's the, the poetic version. If we go back then and make it the snarky version, let's try that. And let's run this. Let's see what happens. Oh, we just got a new subscriber. Thank you. Uh, was that Freya Jefferson? Okay, we'll just wait for that to come through. There we go. Just a jog chilling on a couch like he owns a place. <laughs> that's probably more accurate, to be fair. So that's how we can create some code that will send off an image to OpenAI, get some kind of text back, and then we can do something with that. So what we would need to do next is stitch a couple of things around this. So one piece of code that will take a picture um, with the Raspberry Pi camera and then save that to our local storage. And then we can pass because we will can, we can conf we can say what the file name is for that. So it could just be called like capture.jpg. We can then pass capture.jpg instead of archie.jpg. Send this off with a request, whichever way we want this to be, whether it's a, you know, a poetic one or just factually state what's in the image, we could do that. Uh, and then we could attach on here another piece of code, which will be a speech synthesis. So in the Python AI program, video that I did a while back uh, I talk you through exactly how to do that so uh, that's what we would do there and if we use the Pimroni inventor hat which I've now lost there it is which is the uh, the packet I have here if I just go back to full screen so I bought uh, this and bought another Raspberry Pi Zero as well so that's the 02W you can see because it's got the Wi-Fi chip on it there um, this has an attachment for a speaker. So you can plug in a speaker, you can redirect all the audio from your Raspberry Pi to go through that speaker. So Pimroni have all that information on their website. So I'm going to show you how we can quickly grab that. If I go back over to um, our, just go to the right place and then I'll show you. We go over to a browser. Let's just make this a bit bigger so we can see. And it's probably one of the, there it is, the Inventor Hat Mini just there. And if we scroll down a little bit, there's a Python library. If we click on that, then it'll take you to the GitHub repository where you can learn how to get this up and running. There's quite a few different steps depending on what you want the Inventor Hat to do, but simply you would just type in uh, pip install Inventor Hat Mini. That'll do the main part of the code. And if you want some other things like enabling the I squared C, you can increase the I squared C board rate. You can enable audio, which is the bit, um, I would want to do so it can speak what it sees then that's the the settings that we'll need to do there so to give you an example of how exactly to do that and also if you need to uninstall the library you can do that too so let's go back over to uh, in fact we're going to go over to the actual um, computer I've got on my desk here if I go over here let's move this down a little bit so we can see can I zoom in on that a little bit better yes I can so I've got the eyes here on the desk they've got the little Raspberry Pi just sat behind it there you can see my messy desk there and if I just zoom in there we can see the eyes and I'm actually in the inventor hat mini example code section here so they've got a number of different programs one of them is called motor wave uh, and that will turn the motors sort of left and right speeding up and slowing down and we can basically just run this and hopefully there we go. The eyes will move around a bit. One of them does tend to catch a little bit. I probably just need to sand off a little bit and uh, glue it on a bit better. This right one tends to get a little bit, a little bit sticky just there sometimes. But it's working fine there. And you can also see the camera module just here as well in the middle. See, I don't know if it's got stuck or whether it's just. Uh... Let's see if I can get that to move a bit. There we go. It just gets a little bit stuck every now and again. <laughs> I 
think we've got broken it now. <laughs> Let me just stop the code for a second. So the way that these attach then, there's just you can just see the, the motor um, spindle there and then there's just like a little connector on there and we simply just push them into place like so. And I think what I've done is I've probably pushed it in that many times incorrectly that it's just come a bit loose. So if I run that code again, um, it may, yeah, we go. it's half working there. I just need to put some super glue on the end of that and glue it into place properly. But you get the idea. And what I want to do is rather than just them running this demo program, is I want them to face track. So it'll find somebody in an image, it'll work out where to put the, the eyes to. So do they need to be sort of looking left, looking right, or kind of looking towards each other? Um, and we can do that just using a bit of open CV. So uh, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, so let's get back to our slides. So we're talking about our amazing merch, weren't we? Yes, yeah, so if you've not joined our Discord server, we've got a growing community. It's quite a big uh, community now. Uh, people who are all uh, obsessed, I think, as much as I am about uh, robotics, electronics, Python, Raspberry Pis, and so on. So uh, if you have not joined that, head over to kevsrobots.com slash Discord. You'll get a link there to uh, get access to our Discord group, and it's completely free, so... Uh, check that out if you can and if you want to find me on the social media then I'm all over social media um, I'm on threads so I'm on uh, Kevin McAleer at threads.net so if you already follow me on Instagram I think you'll probably get a, a nudge to follow me on there as well from Instagram I'm at Kevin McAleer at Instagram as well at Kevin McAleer 6 on TikTok and at Kev's Mac on are we going to call this X? Do I need to change my logo or is it still Twitter? What do you think about the whole Twitter thing? I'd love to know about that. And uh, also on Mastodon Social, I'm uh, at Kev's Mac at the Mastodon Social as well. And I do post all kinds of behind the scenes images of stuff I'm working on there. And if you want to help support the show, there's a number of different ways you can do that. You can get your name in the end credits simply by going to kezrobots.com slash coffee. And you can buy a coffee there. I do like my coffee uh, in my nice new VM, not sponsored uh, coffee mug there. Uh, you can do a super thanks. That's the little thanks button at the bottom of the main YouTube player there. If you're watching this live, you can do a super thanks. I'll make sure we've got all that switched on so that'll all work. There we go. And if you want to join the YouTube membership program as well, you can do that by clicking the join button, which I think once you've subscribed, it gets replaced by a join button. You can do that for the price of a coffee per month, for example. OK, I think that's nearly everything. I've got to thank our supporters, of course. So we've got a number of people who've been uh, very generous um, and have supported the show. So I wanted to give these people a shout out. So we've got Steve Phillips who bought uh, a coffee. We have Slarty Bartfast who bought one as well, along with Tom, uh, Roland and Mike. We have a number of different people who've um, joined the Buy Me A Coffee membership program. So that's uh, DN Corti, Marlene Brent. We have John Rank, Tom, Shemi and Steve Phillips. And then on the YouTube side, we have uh, Tinkering Rocks. We've got Cassie, we've got JDM, Jenny Bates. We have uh, Bill Hoy, Oxrag39, uh, Joel Say, Jeff Ford, Javi Gold, Hands from Cheerlights, Michael, and of course, Tom as well. So thank you for everybody who's been really generous and uh, been consistently supporting the show. It means an awful lot to me. And it means I can buy stuff like we've uh, just been looking at there. So this is the point in the video where if you're watching this on replay, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.